Hey, Steven, what's up, man? What's going on? Today's your lucky day. I cleared out your entire schedule because we're going on a food adventure. Does this um, sound familiar? I don't think you have the authority to clear my entire schedule. Oh, I do. Hey, Keith, what's up, man? Oh my gosh. Today's your lucky day. I set out your entire schedule, and uh, we're gonna go on a food adventure. You don't have the authority. To no, I, I did. Don't worry. Bring your bread. Let's go. Right. Let's tell us. First two episodes of Worth It Ever were with Keith Habersberger. Episode one, sushi. Episode two, burgers. I was not there. So today, we're doing sushi and burgers in one episode. Can I just quickly pay tribute to Keith Habersberger? Yeah, sure. Keith, we love you. I don't wanna go anywhere else without you. The clouds will fall. All right, let's go. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three burger and sushi combinations to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. I think this is a very interesting niche of restaurants that offer both sushi and burgers. It exists, it's a real thing. I love sushi, obviously. I love burgers. Together? Here's the thing that'll sell you on it. Our last stop is a restaurant operated by possibly the best sushi chef in the United States. He actually invented a new way of cooking burgers. Okay. So now we're on our way to see June at King's Burger and Got Sushi, which is actually a sushi bar inside of a burger joint. He's going to show us some of his sushi, some of his burgers. It's a thing, I'm telling you. Sushi and burgers. Well, it's in the title. Potato you know. and patata. No, those are the exact same thing, just oh. pronounced differently. Tomato and patato. <laughs> This was my dad's burger joint for 20 years. But since fast food chains coming into this area, he was having a hard time. You just thought to add sushi to your father's burger business. I work for uh, Sushi Roku, um, Katana. A lot of people told me, you know, you should close out the burger and just do the sushi because that's what you're good at. In my belief, as long as you can present good food out, no matter what combination that is, no matter how funny that is, definitely it'll work. We strictly use Faroe Island salmon, which is higher grade. You know, just the rice and fish, but it's a really good salmon, good rice, and then that makes good nigiri sushi. And so when people come, is it typically one or the other? Oh, definitely both together. That's the best way to eat over here. First they start off with the sushi, and then, you know, burgers and dessert. <laughs> we just keep the basic, simple house made Thousand Island with the uh, hand-picked vegetables, seven on CAB patty, certified Angus beef, lightly seasoned with salt and pepper, uh, cheese. This is a Korean family, an American classic, and a Japanese food. It's the American dream. Exactly. Junior cheeseburger and salmon nigiri. I like it. Hot tea. Can you believe we're getting this quality of sushi in this diner in Northridge? Cheers, Steven. <laughs> oh no! You got smashed. Mm. This is crazy good. The sushi is exactly what you want from a casual sushi experience. I think about Sushi Stop as like one of the pioneers for affordable sushi. Right. I don't want to say they're doing a better job, but they're, they're kind of doing a better job. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're riding in the same lane. Let's burger it up. Isn't that a picture? It's like a thing that grandmas say. Aren't you just a picture? <laughs> Soft. Yeah. Pillowy. Let's bump buns. Mm. Have you ever thought about having wasabi on a burger? <laughs> wow. In what universe does this happen? Northridge universe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is going to blow my nose out, but let's do it. Yeah. Oh! There's no reason why that wouldn't that go. That is perfect. Yeah. It's like having a spicy mustard on a sandwich. There's nothing weird happening here. And now that I've eaten half a cheeseburger, I can have some more sushi. Adam, you want this sushi? You could soy sauce your burger. That's really good. <laughs> Next, we're gonna try our famous King's Burger and an Akanpachi three-way. Our King's Burger is a cheeseburger with tons of pastrami on top of the cheeseburger. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can we say more about that? Yeah. We serve three pieces of Kanpachi. And this is your creation. Yeah, I had an American cuisine background and I wanted to add that into the sushi because I thought that's the great way to present my sushi in a special way. This looks like a dish I would get at a omakase restaurant. Mm -hmm. Each piece is seasoned, ready to go. You don't have to do nothing. Okay, the jalapeno one. Jalapeno. Whoa. Very buttery. The uh, yuzu one. This is the one I want to try the most. Mm. Oh yeah. Right in a steak. Lemony fresh. Little needles coming through my mouth. Last one is the smoked. Oh. Mm. Oh yeah. It's a completely different preparation of the kompachi. And now the main course. Boom. 
just makes sense. Good food makes sense. That's right. Good food will always be good. Sushi and burger. Sitting in a tree. You know that phrase, jack of all trades, master of none? Well, apparently you can be jack of two trades and master of both. Because <laughs> that was amazing. Sushi and burger pack. It's actually just a uh, burger pack. There are two popular dishes that can technically be translated as hamburger in Japan. One is the beef patty in a bun, which is called hanbaga. The other is a pan-fried beef patty more closely resembling a hamburg steak, and it's called hanbagu. This version is often served with sauce and steamed rice. That is literally like a sushi burger. Those two dishes are part of that Yoshoku Japanese cuisine that we learned about back in our eggs video. Wow, that is both a fact a throwback and vocab. That's the double episode treat. So on our way to our next restaurant, we're seeing Charles and Courtney, who run Ototo, a sake bar, which actually does not serve sushi. What? <laughs> they serve a burger and a raw fish dish, crudo. It may seem like I'm cutting corners here, but this is actually the best representation of raw fish and burgers next to each other on a menu. Trust me. <laughs> The word ototo means little brother in Japanese. It is the little brother of our other restaurant, Subaki, right next door. Where does this cat come from? I have to ask. <laughs> I'm personally obsessed with cats. I have a little cat myself. If the cat has no connection to the name, we wanted to make it feel sort of casual and homey and felt approachable. I think sometimes sake can be a little intimidating. We try to take some of the mystery out of sake and make it really fun and, and just get people drinking it. The characters for izakaya literally translate to stay sake place. The food is kind of built to taste good with sake and beer. The idea is to have smaller plates that complement sake and all the way at the end, a heavy dish to sober you up. We do some crudo, which is raw fish, but not sushi. Typically in an izakaya, you're not eating sushi because the rice takes up a lot of valuable space that could be used for drinking. Ah. For drinking, right. The fish is daisirami, which is a flute. It's mixed with lakyo, which is a Japanese shallot that we pickle. It's finished with yuzu juice and yuzu oil, lemon zest. Mix that together and that's a crudo. What kind of sake would you recommend with the crudo? Because it is a raw fish, we don't want anything too strong. Right now, my number one pairing is haka, a tokubetsu junmai from Yamaguchi in Western Japan. A lot of nice minerality to it, really fresh and crisp. Come on, this coaster? Let's see a little cat face through your glass. A little cat face. Cheers. That's so tasty. Wait, I'm still trying to figure out what this is. Apples and lemons lightly brushing against your tongue. <laughs> wow. I'm trying to picture the scenario where you are lightly brushing fruit against your tongue and <laughs> does not make me want to drink something. No, taste it. Whoa, you could yeah. perform a surgery with these chopsticks. Yeah. Very thin and light. I like that a lot. You know what I like about this visually? It kind of reminds me of potato salad. Yeah. Okay, I love it. This is my kind of dish. This feels like something that I could eat and drink even if I wasn't hungry because it's just a little bowl of flavor. It's like chips. Yeah, you just pop it. Boom. Mm. The little pickled shallot. I just want to buy a jar of that, scoop it into you my mouth. You and pickles. Pickles are the best. When I die, pickle me. Ooh, they're nice chopsticks. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. You guys have this burger. Yeah, the inspiration comes from Moss Burger. It's the second largest fast food franchise in Japan after McDonald's. It's huge. Whoa. There was a guy that lived in Los Angeles. He loved Tommy's Burger. Which is famous for their chili cheeseburger, yeah. right? And he brought the idea to Japan. It's a sweeter chili, more tomatoes, a little bit more taste to the Japanese palate. Gotta get some sake to go with that. This is a Honjozo Genshu, undiluted, so it's basically a cask strain sake. A little more power, a little more alcohol, rich flavors and aromas. Look at this burger. Oh. That is good. <laughs> I've actually never had a chili burger before this moment. What? That's absurd. It works. Yeah. It seemed unnecessary, I don't know. You need to go to the Midwest. This is very reminiscent of my cafeteria days. Chili this is good on everything. This is a sick combo. <laughs> so the chili is a very strong taste. The sake is standing up to it. My burger is gone. I feel like I didn't say anything about it, but that's how you know it's really good, when you shut up and eat. Next food show, shut up and eat. <laughs> that's Adam's iteration. Okay, driver, take us away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
god. Got Annie in the cockpit. Hey, how come you don't have uh, some gum and mints back here, Annie? Yeah, what's the deal? With them? So that does it for Los Angeles. We've sort of exhausted our sushi and burger restaurants. You do realize we've only actually technically been to one. It's a niche market, Steven. That's what makes it good. So now we're on our way to New York City. My favorite city in the world. Yeah. New York, baby. We have made it back to my hometown. Big Apple Steve is here. You lived here for one year. Yeah. We're going to a restaurant that in some ways inspired this whole video. But before we get to that, burger back. Library of Congress credits Louise Lunch in New Haven, Connecticut was selling the first hamburger in the U.S. They serve a ground beef patty between two slices of toast. The restaurant opened in 1895. So the first hamburger wasn't even on a bun. And look how far we've come. Now we've got burgers and sushi. When did they start putting cheese on it? The cheeseburger likely dates back to around the 1920s in Los Angeles, but it's debatable. Gotcha. So the burger is a thing that has always been evolving. The next restaurant. The next restaurant we're going to. Continues that theme of innovation. We're on our way to Tetsu, which is the casual restaurant of famous sushi chef Masa. His main restaurant here in New York City, around $595 for a single seat. Wait, why are we going there? Because we have to have a burger too. You can only get his burger at Tetsu. <laughs> So what kind of restaurant is Tetsu? Tetsu is more kind of casual Japanese dining. Which is lots of a grill. Robata grill. What is that? Robata means actually that all the way Japanese house, every house has the fire pit around called Robata, around the fire. That's the way we do a long counter facing to all the grill. You know, I've, I've heard so much about your main restaurant. I wonder if this restaurant was for you a way to have a little more fun. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Masa is more focused only the sushi. Here is more kind of lots of variety, you know. This is what I like when I day off and I'm enjoying all the different stuff. Oh, interesting. So this is more of the day off style exactly. of dining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a little more accessible too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Very much. My place is kind of, you know, $600 start. But here is, you know, burger, $24. What's the one sushi dish that we should have at Tetsu? Toro, Masa Toro, well known, very famous one. Is we do just, you know, finely scrape it, very fine, like a tata, seaweed, and fatty tuna. So do you feel like your burger is better because of all your sushi experience? Well, no, yeah, but, but I love burger, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's most of the things. <laughs> How did you get interested in cooking burgers? Seven years ago, I started making all the cast iron stuff. So you started working with? I designing. Oh, wow. I was designing the other location, cast iron pot. I smoked cigar, and I saw that the ashtray was shaped like a burger. <laughs> so the idea came from an ashtray. Ashtray, yeah. Put together like a shell, it works. Most burgers, they cook in a flat planter, right? Getting thinner, 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 and it got dry, right? Cast iron intensive help create the crispiness between the meat and the fat. The spikes are cooking it from the inside as well. Through, yes, exactly. So the masa burger that we're trying today, what comes on that? Beef with the American cheddar. So it's just bun, patty, cheese. That's it. No veggies. That's what I like. Yeah. Also, bun is special bun. We make in downstairs. Very nice, moist, and the top is crispy. Also, we do grill same time with patty. What are the correlations between making sushi and making a good burger? When you make sushi quickly, there's a key. Quickly make sushi the best, you know. My cast iron also same thing. So close it, bzzz, they open it, done. After that, we're gonna smoke it with the good cedar chopsticks. Oh, wow. We wash after customer use. So it's the old recycled chopsticks exactly. are, are exactly. being used for the smoking. That's very cool. What beverage do you think we should have with our Cora roll and our burger? You know what? What I like the uh, normally martini. Oh. Bombay Safari martini for start. Then I call it gasoline. You know, every my brother that knows make us marks on the rocks. This is my gasoline. You can enjoy part of the masa and you can enjoy burger part of a tetsu. You can enjoy both, you know. Cheers, Steven. Cheers. Season six finale. Whoa. So we're drinking martinis, as Chef Masa would, dry, olives on the side. Yes. Just like, oh, <laughs> I got you. Nice save. Mm. So we did not come in here planning to get the foie gras nigiri. No. Chef suggested it. It's a nigiri made over at the sushi bar, seared it with an iron out of the grill. That iron was crazy, by the way. Yeah. This whole thing is crazy. That's true. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna use my hands. Cheers, and... Steven. Cheers. Mm. Wow, that is insane. Ooh. The foie gras just instantly disappeared in my mouth. It was basically just a ball of rice saturated with a fat. A lot of fat. Speaking of fat, <laughs> we have fatty tuna. 
Cheers. Oh. Hell oh, yeah. These are like the best roll I've ever had. Yeah, normally you eat a sushi roll. It still feels like a cylinder in your mouth. This disappears into a cloud of sushi. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of soy sauce. Tuna is my favorite fish. Coral. It's because you're the bougie. Best. What? Tuna is not bougie. <laughs> you ever been to a what? grocery store? Have you seen a tuna? Adam, you want some? Oh! oh! Give me a descriptor. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna throw some gasoline on the fire mm -hmm. and eat a burger. Cheers, Steven. Cheers. Did Chef Masa make these dishes? Oh yeah, he did. He did? He made these? <laughs> Can this guy get any cooler? The smell is ah. ridiculous. Oh. Wow. I feel the most gluttonous I've ever yeah. felt in my entire life. Look at that smoke coming out. This is sinful. Taking a bite out of this thing, you don't desire any sauce no. or condiments no. or anything. It's no. just good on its own. On the way here, I was super nervous. We're gonna mm -hmm. see like Chef Masa. And then we walk in and the guy's in a hoodie. I totally forgot that I was nervous about any of this. Right, I think it's true of all the best food. It's disarming. You immediately forget mm. that you're anywhere except somewhere eating delicious foods. That was exactly what I wanted. Mm. I'm a fool. You are a fool. I'm a fool. Oh. Mary, we go on our way. <laughs> Take the gasoline away, no. All right, cut. <laughs> Have you ever seen a burger prepared that way before? I've never seen any other food prepared that way. It was yeah. an actual medieval Iron Maiden to cook a cheeseburger. Well, wow. Andrew, which sushi and burger spot was the most worth it to you at this given price. My worth it winner is Got Sushi and King's Burger. No way! You could go in for just one or the other, be totally satisfied, or you could get both and have the best time of your life. My worth it winner goes to Tetsu. Whoa. Was anybody surprised though? No, you're a fancy boy. No, I'm not a fancy yeah. boy. We just ate at a restaurant with one of the most esteemed sushi chefs in the world, but I was more excited to eat the burger. Adam? That is totally fair in this episode. Wow. The one time I will let you cheat. Annie, who's your worth it winner? Season six? That's a wrap. I just wanna say thank you to everybody who makes this show possible. All you see is the head of the snake and the unhinged jaw <laughs> that devours all of the food in its bath, much like an anaconda do. <laughs> <laughs> We have an edit team, we have a production team, we have a legal team, we have a research team. All the teams at BuzzFeed. Thank you to all those people. We really couldn't do it without y'all.